I'm Chris Lum, Product Manager at PPI. Today I'd like to go over the proper installation of an SAF adapter mount bearing. But first I'd like to go over the components in the SAF bearing, which would start with the basic housing, the bearing, the stabilizer ring, the adapter sleeve, locking nut, locking washer, and the two LER seals. In addition, I'd like to go over the tools that will be required to install the SAF. Today we're going to require a dead blow hammer and a ball peen hammer, a punch, a torque wrench, spanner wrench, a ratchet, and a socket to fit the cap bolts of our bearing housing, and an assortment of feeler gauges. Now we're going to move on to installing the bearing. We're going to start out checking this shaft for burrs, nicks, or anything like that. We're going to take a clean rag and wipe it down. Usually a little light oil film on here. We're going to be wiping some of that off as we check for those nicks. Once we've determined the shaft is ready to accept our bearing, we're going to first install our inside LER seal. Put it in its approximate location. Then we will put on the adapter sleeve, threads pointing towards the outside. Slide that onto our shaft as well. We will then slide our bearing onto the adapter sleeve and we'll measure its bench clearance at this point. We'll take the feeler gauges. And we're going to start out here at a 0 0.0047. We'll slide these in between the outer race and the rolls on the bottom of the bearing. What we're looking for is the amount of force or the drag that's required to slide that feeler gauge out. As you can see, there's a moderate amount of drag on those feeler gauges, and I'm going to call that our bench clearance at 0 0.0047. To determine clearance reduction, we simply look at the part number located on the outer race of the bearing, and we'll notice that this one here ends in 1.5. We can then look in our operation and maintenance manual, and the chart here tells us that bearings ending in 1.5 need a clearance reduction of 0 0.0016 to 0 0.0020. With that determined, we're gonna take our lock washer, slide it into place, our lock nut with the chamfered side in towards the bearing, and we'll start that on our threads of our tapered adapter. We hand tighten it till snug, then we'll take our spanner wrench and we'll hook it into the tabs of the lock nut, and we'll begin tightening the lock nut. As we're doing this, we'll be pressing the bearing up onto that adapter, and as we do that, we will be expanding the inner race and removing the clearance between the rollers and the races. At this point, we'll take our feeler gauge, and this is a 0 0.0028. And we'll slide it through the rollers, and you'll see there is a, there's a stiff pull. It feels very similar to when we checked our bench clearance. That would be removing 0 0.0019 internal clearance from the bearing, that would mean we have this bearing set. We now need to lock our lock nut and washer together. To do that, we'll line up one of these locking tangs on the lock washer with the corresponding slot in the lock nut. And when we find that, we'll use a punch and a hammer, and we'll lock that tang and our lock nut together so they can't come loose. Next, it's time for our outside LER seal, and we'll put it in its approximate location. And then we can mount it into the bearing base. There's a held and free end on these bearings. If this were the held side, we would be putting our stabilizer ring in now. We would want to slide the stabilizer ring near the locking nut and the outer shoulder of the bearing housing. We align up our LER seals with our stabilizer ring in place. We line it up and line up all of our grooves. We're now to the point where we would need to add lubrication to this bearing. 
To do that, we want to hand pack the grease by forcing it through the back side of the bearing until it purges out the rolling elements on the other side. We'll force that grease in all the way around that bearing. Then we'll fill the base approximately one third full. If this housing is going to be sitting for an extended period, PPI suggests filling the housing 100% full. We're now ready to install our SAF bearing cap. You will notice in the cap, there is a dowel hole and there's corresponding dowel pins in the base. You need to make sure these are lined up so that the cap will sit correctly onto the bearing base. We'll then tighten the cap bolts. We'll snug them down with our ratchet. Then we'll torque them to the proper torque specs, which are once again found in our PPI operation and maintenance manual. And we'll torque these down to 60 foot-pounds. That concludes proper installation of an SAF style bearing. For more information, please go to our website or contact your local PPI representative.